It's recently been announced that Hollywood is making a movie on Yasuke, and this has definitely created some buzz within the Afro-descended world. Some are hesitant, however, in their excitement, and rightfully so, as Hollywood doesn't exactly have the best record when it comes to advancing black narratives. So today, we're going to be discussing the history of Yasuke, and also a brief history on Africans in Japan during the 16th century, and then we'll get into the larger topic on what Hollywood needs to get right based on this context. So stay tuned. What up African world, it's Home Team here and I'm back at it with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And as always, if you want to support the Home Team, you can do so on Patreon.com. I have some new rewards for you guys, so be sure to check that out. Also, go to Afrographics.com, a website where you can find unique illustrative infographics summarizing African history. All links to Patreon, Afrographics, and Home Team merchandise are in the description box below. Yasuke was a 16th century African, likely from southeastern Africa, who served as a samurai under the Japanese warlord Oda Nobunaga. Now before we get into the history of Yasuke, let's first discover the relationship between the Japanese and African people in general. The Japanese encounter with Africans dates back to 1546 when three Portuguese ships arrived in Japan carrying Africans likely from Mozambique or in the general vicinity of the Swahili coast. One Catholic priest already in Japan reported the incident in a letter to his colleague. The Catholic priest speaks about the sheer excitement and overwhelming interest the Japanese had about witnessing African people as they've never seen them before. Many came to see the Negro all the way from as far as a distance of 60 miles. The Italian missionary Ganeci Organtino, who came to Japan in 1570 also wrote in a letter claiming that the Japanese would pay money to see slaves from Ethiopia. Negro fever in Japan was in full effect and it became so prominent that Ganeci even suggested that Jesuits who found themselves in bad financial shape should actually bring Negroes with them. This infatuation with black people in Japan gives us the perfect backdrop for the story of Yasuke. Yasuke was undoubtedly the most relevant African in Japanese history. In general, people love the story of Yasuke, but we seldom understand why he was so important. Yasuke is significant because he contributed to one of the most critical periods in Japanese history, the Sengoku period, a period marked by constant military conflict over the unification of Japan. In other words, this period in Japanese history helped to shape what Japan looks like today. Padre Alessandro Valignani, an Italian missionary, brought Yasuke to Kyoto, Japan, and news spread rapidly of his arrival. Upon hearing this, the local Japanese population congregated in the city, threw stones, and even pulled down walls and gates just to get a glimpse at Yasuke. Oda Nobunaga was apparently impressed with Yasuke. His written chronicle had some very glowing things to say about him. A black man came from a Christian country. His age seemed somewhere around 26 or 27. He is as black as a cow and looks healthy and talented. He is stronger than 10 powerful men. Now from our modern lens, this may seem extraordinarily racist, but this was actually a genuine compliment with no undercurrent of 21st century baggage. The Japanese apparently called black people Kokujin or Kokudo. Thus, instead of simply calling the African visitor Kokudo, Oda Nobunaga decided to give him a name, Yasuke. Naming him alludes to the fact that Nobunaga knew Yasuke was meant for more, so he inquired about Yasuke's permanent residency in Japan, essentially to become his royal retainer. And this is where the story of Yasuke takes off. Yasuke became so beloved by the Japanese ruler that he acquired the esteemed title of samurai. Yasuke apparently even spoke some Japanese and had delightful conversations with Lord Nobunaga. Yasuke was reportedly given his own residence and a katana weapon. Upon his baptism, if you will, into the samurai brotherhood, Yasuke fought alongside Nobunaga's forces. After various battles and skirmishes, Lord Nobunaga's forces were eventually defeated by the Akechi. Yasuke was captured by the Akechi forces, 
but was later released, and this ends our recorded history of Yasuke. It's interesting to know the diversity concerning Japanese opinion on Africans and even Europeans. Many Japanese viewed Africans with awe and intrigue, with no apparent idea to their inferiority, but some other Japanese viewed Africans as beast. On the same coin, you had Japanese opinion on various European groups. Southern Europeans were called Nabanjin, literally meaning Southern Barbarians, and Northern Europeans were known as Komojin, literally meaning red-haired men. They were also known as long-nosed goblins or giant monsters. So it does seem as though the Japanese distributed their prejudice equally. So since Hollywood decided to take the story on, what do they need to get right? Well, the story of Yasuke gives Hollywood a lot of wiggle room for a creative license as there are many gaps of knowledge. First, it'll be interesting to see if Hollywood advances the idea that Yasuke was initially a slave there is no real solid evidence that Yasuke was indeed enslaved, but given the history of interaction between the Swahili coast and the rest of the world in general, slavery was unfortunately a big function of that economy during that time. Any African seen in India or Asia would have likely come through that dehumanizing route. In fact, the Chinese called enslaved Africans Seng Chi, so their presence was not uncommon. In all honesty, I would be surprised if Hollywood didn't go that route with Yasuke because it would be very easy to advance. In my opinion, if Hollywood wants to get it right, they should leave this initial status open for interpretation, which unfortunately would be rather difficult to pull off on the big screen. The next thing Hollywood needs to get right is Japanese opinion on Africans. Historically, as I've mentioned before, the Japanese view on African people was largely neutral, neither all positive nor all negative. In fact, the 16th century view of Africans in Japan was more romanticized, if anything, as the Japanese had not fully developed any foundational views on African people. So if Hollywood wants to get it right, most of the movies should portray Yasuke's relationship with Japan as a glowing one. It was only upon his capture by the enemy that Yasuke became inferior or undesirable. But one can attribute that to either his enemy status or his African status. And finally, what Hollywood should get right is the ending. We have no record of what actually happened to Yasuke after his capture and release, so Hollywood can essentially do anything with that. In my own bias, if they showed Yasuke returning to Africa, that would be the frosting on the cake. That is, if they're only planning on doing one movie. If not, they should probably make Yasuke's ending pretty open so that they can do another one. Closing this book on Yasuke wouldn't be a smart move in my opinion. After you tell his story, you then create various narratives on how he continued his legacy. All in all, I actually do have faith that Hollywood will get the ending right. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like these videos and want to help out in this continued production, be sure to check out the home team and support the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.